Well, it's hard to tell, given the very messy, I would say, uh, political process. Uh, I can say what I think uh, the UK and the EU should wish. Uh, we are very close partners. Uh, we have been partners for a long time. Uh, we do a lot of trade with one another, goods, services, people. We have a lot of common interests. Uh, maybe even no more common interests with uh, a tough world, with, the, with Trump. So I think we should wish to try to maintain as closely a partnership in economic terms as possible, to try to more or less replicate uh, what we have at the moment. So personally, I'm in favor of finding a deal uh, whereby the UK can continue to have access to the EU single market, but probably not all of the single markets, there's the issue of uh, the free movement of, of labor. Uh, I think that is really a red line for the UK. So I think the UK would like to maintain access to the single market for goods, for services, for capital, but not for labor or only partially uh, for labor. Now, whether we are willing to, to give that to them and what are our demands in exchange for this demand from, from the UK. So what kind of a deal? Uh, we are willing to do, what kind of common interests we have and what kind of a deal, what are our red lines, what are their red lines. I think this is going to be the subject of the, of the tough negotiation which is coming and I think nobody can really imagine what, what the outcome will be. Yes, there is that discussion. Um, I think there is a bit of worry uh, given what's going on in, in Netherlands. Uh, I mean, there's worry, and obviously in France we have the two elections this year. So let me be let me be clear. I do not see any countries of Central and Eastern Europe. You know, sometimes people talk about Poland, about Hungary, about the Czech Republic leaving the EU. I think zero probability of that. Zero. Good or bad. I mean, some people may wish that some leave, but this is not going to happen. Uh, they are benefiting a lot from transfers through the EU budget, which is very favorable to, to those countries. So, you know, they may make some difficulties for the functioning of the EU, but they are not about to leave. Uh, could a old member of the EU leave? The Netherlands, France, Italy? I certainly hope not. Uh, I think we will know a little bit more this year. So my view is that the probability that a country would want to do what the UK has done is extremely, extremely low. That the UK is really an extreme case of dissatisfaction that exists in other countries. I mean, I would not say that there is no dissatisfaction. I'm listening to the campaign in France about the election. I'm listening to you know what's happening in Italy, in Netherlands. Yes, there is dissatisfaction, but not to the extent that we have in the UK. There's not that kind of history. So my view is that we will continue to discuss this, whether other countries would leave, but I don't see any country, neither among the old, neither or among the new countries that is going to leave.